What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes and this is gonna be my in-depth analysis and review of the Ascended Edun banner which also features Kat, Nime and Hugh. I'll be going over the best builds that you can run on these units for different game modes and with that said, let us begin with the star of this banner, Ascended Edun. She's a blue armor dragon this time with Dew Dragonstone as her preferred weapon. This gives her minus one special cooldown and it is also effective on other armor opponents, so she has got pretty good matchup against other armor units like Fallen Edelgard for example. She also has the Sylvalan shield built into this weapon, so her armor weakness is nullified, but keep in mind that she still has her dragon weakness, so you gotta watch out for the dragon effective weapons. If she's within 3 spaces of an ally, she can debuff the opponent's alt stats by minus 5 during the combat and she also gets debuff neutralization and follow up negation from this effect. So she can be really really bulky and not really care about any debuffs on herself and this kind of condition is extremely easy to meet and she's always going to be having this weapon active. This weapon is really reminiscent of Brave Hector's Malted Weapon Refine and similarly Edun is also an extremely strong save armor unit, one of the best in the game. The only thing which she's missing compared to Brave Hector is the fact that she doesn't get the auto follow up from this weapon so she has to run a fighter skill in her slot B to get the auto follow up in the enemy phase. And also Brave Hector is not weak to dragon effective weapons but still I would say that Ascended Edun is on par with Brave Hector when it comes to being an effective far save or near save armor unit and I'm not really saying that she's gonna be better than him but in some scenarios and matchups she's gonna be having the upper hand. For example against the windsweep users Edun is not gonna be weak to them because she's a dragon unit and windsweep does not work against dragons but still Brave Hector has got that auto follow up in his weapon so he has more flexibility with a sloppy skill to run stuff like hardy fighter for example or special fighter uh, but Edun does need to get the auto follow up from the fighter skill or quicker post. But still overall she's gonna be an extremely solid unit, especially because she is a 195 BST armor unit. So in this gen we usually have armor units with 190 BST but they for some reason give Edun trainee BST all the time so that's why she's a 195 BST and an outlier. So she ends up having extremely good stat spread with 43 base attack and also high 43 base defense and 38 resistance. So she has got incredibly good mixed bulk. She can work both as a near save unit and as a far save unit. And I would say that if you have resources available and if you do not really have a lot of really good far save armors, then it is worth investing into her for building her up as a far save armor unit. The reason being is that while she's good as a near save, she can provide you with more value with her strength and her weapon, even against range opponents and I would say that a lot of the annoying threats in this game are going to be ranged threats a lot of the times. So she's going to be able to deal with them pretty easily as a far save unit a lot of the times and as a near save unit a lot of units can work so it really depends if you have a lot of really good far save armors or not and even if you have invested far save armors like Brave Hector for example or Ascended Fearm, Edun is just a nice option to have for Summoner Duels S or for using in different seasons of Aether Raids. So it really depends if you have the resources and how much you like using the save armor units because Ascended Edun is easily one of the best in that category. She also comes with a new line of skill in Wily Fighter. So this skill pretty much provides you with dull all effect while giving you an auto follow up. So while running this skill she doesn't really have to run any kind of close defense 4 or distant defense 4 because she's going to be able to ignore any kind of visible buffs of the opponent so definitely helps a lot in terms of tanking. So overall Ascended Edun is a really really good save armor unit who's useful in pretty much every single game mode in the game. She can score extremely high as a 195 BST unit so even if you plus and merger she's going to be giving you a lot of value in arena and I'm sure we're going to be seeing her a lot in different game modes because of how strong she can be. And it's definitely something to see an armor unit be on par with someone like Brave Hector who has been a really strong and consistent save armor unit and a really good unit in general ever since he got his weapon refined. So for the same reasons Ascended Edun is also a really really fantastic armor unit. Now as for her builds you can simply run a budget build by having steady breath and having bonfire. So because of due dragonstone bonfire becomes a 2 turn special and with steady breath you can instantly retaliate back with it and she's going to be hitting extremely extremely hard with the special so it's definitely your best option on a budget and something like this could be run in ether raids offense for sure. Um, and even though these builds are for ether raids offense you can still run them in different game modes. Um, it's just that the save armor units are really helpful in ether raids offense. You can also use her as a distant counter far save armor unit. Like I mentioned before she can definitely give you value as a far save unit if you do not have a lot of them. 
And she can definitely run Crafty Fighter in her slot B to make sure that she can get some kind of guard effect because she is a slow tank and against units who have got null follow up or they are faster and they have some kind of auto follow up, they're gonna be able to still double her. And also against brave weapon users, it is definitely a good effect to have. So because we're not running Steady Breath Bonfire here, you can just run Glimmer. And another reason why Iduna is also a really good far save armor unit is because of the fact that she's got adaptive damage on her Dragon Breath. So this can definitely help you get one shots by targeting the lower defense of the enemy. And Glimmer is going to be doing a fantastic job with that. And for her secret seal, you definitely want something that can help you self-sustain. So Mystic Boost is really helpful. So both of these builds do work out. And keep in mind that she's an Ascended unit, so you can get an Ascended Acid on her for free. So you could probably try to get an attack asset on her by not using any kind of florette. So it's completely free. Resistance asset is also pretty nice here as a far save unit because she does have a super boon in it. So it really depends. Attack overall is really nice, but resistance is also really helpful with a far save build. You can also use her in Summoner Duels R. And Summoner Duels R is a lot more cutthroat and you're going to be facing some insane units and that's why we want a build that can survive a lot of matchups. Survivability in my opinion is a lot more important in Summoner Duels than actually killing. So in this case, Hardy Fighter is by far the best lobby skill for this and you can run Deflect Magic. Ninja Corrin, if she ends up being on a Hero Rises banner, she could end up being a lot more common and I feel like... Uh, getting that survivability against those common units is really nice with Deflect Magic. But then again, you can still run Quick Repost if you feel like they're not going to be a problem for you. But basically with Hardy Fighter and Aegis, you can have a Precharge Aegis that is going to be giving you the true damage reduction. By true damage reduction, I mean that it is not going to be getting cut by Deadeye or Lethality. And Lethality Yuri is one of the most obnoxious units to face. So having a far safe unit who is resilient to that kind of threat is going to be extremely helpful. So that's why I really like this Hardy Fighter Deflect Magic build that she can run. Brave Hector also runs this, but unfortunately Idun does not really get a guaranteed follow-up attack. But in most cases, she's going to be powerful enough to one-shot a lot of these offensive threats. You can also use her with Dragon's Wrath. The double special hero banner does have Halloween Sothas right now. And Dragon's Wrath works really well in both scenarios of giving her more bulk and also more attack. So this can help you because she has a weapon that can have follow-up negation. So as it is, on her first attack, she can put everything into it and also get the damage reduced on the first attack that she takes. So definitely not the best option, but still it's an interesting option with something like Glimmer so that she can focus on one-shotting opponents with the true damage that she can get with Dragon's Wrath while minimizing the damage that she takes with the damage reduction. And finally, if you do invest into her heavily, then Far Save is definitely the way to go for something like Arena. And Wily Fighter is really good for Arena purpose but where people are going to be running a lot of rally skills. Blue Flame is the perfect special as you can retaliate back with it using the Steady Breath. Kath is the 4 star focus unit of this banner and the 3 star 4 star demote unit. She's a green infantry dagger unit with armor pin dagger as her inner double weapon. So this is basically Sky Mayogi in the non-seasonal version and this is effective on the armored opponents and it also has hardy bearing built into it. So we're going to be able to disable skills that change attack priority like Vantage or Desperation. So overall a decent weapon on a budget. The problem with this is that a lot of common far safe tanks like Ascended Idun and Brave Hector have no armor weakness and Ascended Fiorm can still take this on with her Ice Mare. So it's a decent option on a budget but there are definitely better options that you can run on Cat. And you should surely be running the better options because she has got really nice offensive stat spread for a demo unit with 36 base attack and 43 base speed and both of them have the super boon. So this allows her to function really well offensively as a merge project. Her mix bulk is alright, it's not extremely too high or too low and she does come with speed resistance link at 4 star. Muriel also came with the same link skill and Kath also has this but Kath has got reposition while Muriel has got drawback. And then she's got attack resistance bond logged at 5 star. So she could be compared to Renak who we recently got and Kath pretty much dunks on Renak because he's a 5 star logged unit who doesn't really have a preferred weapon whereas Kath is going to be a popular merch project because she's going to be available in the lower rarity pool. So a lot of people are going to be investing into Kath rather than investing into a 5 star logged unit like Renak who's going to be really hard to plus and merge. So yeah, Kath pretty much ends up becoming the green calm of this uh, banner essentially and a really nice merge project option if you really like her and if you want to have an infantry dagger option. 
So for our builds, you can just run Fury 3 in our slot and have Blade Session as the Sacred Seal to maximize her offenses. And if you do invest heavily into her with plus and merges, and you do not really have any kind of premium dagger to go with, then Bone Carver Plus from Desert Dean is a really fantastic option offensively, which can give you extra attack and speed and also some chip damage. So Sparrow 3 and Desperation can be a nice option. So Sparrow 3 is available in the Divine Code section. And if you want to use her in Summoner Duels, then you can run her with Lethality. And Lethality can be worked out with a Duo Chrom or Infantry Pulse so that you can have it pre-charged, uh, you know, for attacking the opponent. If you want to invest heavily into her, then Vicious Dagger Plus or Courtly Fan is a pretty nice option. Both of them are the same weapons that give you the partial null follow-up and also give you extra attack and speed. So that enables them to abuse Wind Sweep and still double attack while not taking any kind of counter attack. So this is pretty much the best build that a lot of the dagger units can go with because safely attacking opponents is going to be really nice. And you can run attack speed ideal because you're not going to be taking counter attacks in the player phase most of the time. So it makes it easier for you to maintain that condition and just stack all of the offenses on her with Blade Session. You can also use her in Arena with Flashing Blade 4 and Wind Sweep with Courtly Fan or Vicious Dagger. Lethality is going to be a high cooldown special here, but still, uh, you should be able to charge it up with Flashing Blade 4. And because she does reach 180 BST if you go with a Super Boon like in Attack or Speed, you don't really need to run a dual skill on her. So while she might not be the highest scoring Arena unit, she can still be useful in Arena without a dual skill. And finally, if you do want to use her in Aetherate's Offense as a Gale Force setup unit, or as a Wings of Mercy setup unit, then you can just run her with Pumpkin in a Box and have Fury 4 and Fury 3 to make a Fury 10. So in two combats, she can fall into the Wings of Mercy range of her allies, and this could be a way of setting up Gale Force, and her green color is definitely going to be helping you against Saros or uh, Note if you use her in either of the seasons. So her color does help her in that regard for facing those common mythic units, and there are definitely other ways of setting up Gale Force, but again, if you like Cat a lot, then this is one way of productively using her in Aetherid's offense with Disarm Trap and a Fury 10 build. Nime is a colorless infantry mage with a Vulture Tome that is essentially a Plagian weapon. So this can double down on the debuffs depending on the visible debuffs that you have on the opponent. And she does have pretty good synergy with Attack Resistance Menace present in her base kit. So overall she is basically going to be a mage tank with her extremely high resistance of base 43. She actually has the highest resistance in the entire game as of making this video. So that's kind of amazing. And then she's got very high base attack at 42 having super boon in it as well. Unfortunately she doesn't really have very good HP at base 36 and her defense is also quite low. Her speed is really awkward at base 33 where it could work out if you invest her into a lot, but it is going to be hard to invest into her because she's a 5 star locked unit. Um, and most of the time, she's going to be getting doubled by a lot of the modern fast range threats. So I'm really glad that she's finally in the game, but unfortunately she is stuck in this awkward position where she doesn't exactly have a very stacked preferred weapon. She ends up having this inheritable weapon uh, that can be used on other colorless mages as well, which only gives her the plagian effect, which is nice for sure, uh, but she definitely needed something more. And then she's got the stat spread which does make her into a mage tank which is definitely pretty great but her speed stat definitely leaves something more to be desired off. So that is Nime and if you just want to run her on a budget you can simply run quicker pose and her slot B and tank mages and a resistance refine could definitely be done here because keep in mind that this is an inheritable weapon so it could be refined. And then you can just run her with Lull Attack Resistance as well. If you have that available, it definitely makes it a lot easier for her to tank a lot of the units and just not care about the visible buffs of them. Now, like I was saying, if you want to make her work out with her speed, then you definitely need heavy investment on her. And by heavy, I mean pretty much max investment with all of the speed stacking skills like the Solo 4 and Solo Sacred Seal, having the speed refine, the summoner support, everything can pretty much help her have more than 55 speed which is not going to be a lot in the grand scheme of things but still it is going to be enough for her to make use of null follow up against many of the threats and still be a pretty nice mage tank who's not going to get doubled all that much. So if you're a big fan of her and if you get a lot of merges on her um, then this could be done at max investment. She can definitely be used in Aetherite's offense because of her formidable resistance. Unfortunately, her defense isn't really too high, so that's why defense refine and running Mila for getting some defense boost is going to be helping you. And she could be used with a near save unit while she can just tank the mages. She's colorless, so she doesn't really have any kind of weapon strangle disadvantage. So it does make her into a pretty nice mage tank for Aetherite's offense for sure. 
Um, but still, just watch out for the physical threats here. And she could be used as a counter pick unit against a lot of the teams which rely heavily on the magical threats. So against them, Nima can definitely tank them really easily and then kill them with her high attack stat. And Mirror Stance 3 is going to be helpful here to get the guard effect. It's really important for a tank, especially Nitha Raid's offense. And Mystic Boost can pretty much help you get the self-sustain so that she doesn't really die to a lot of the hits. You can also use her in Arena with Sea Duel Infantry 4 if you do plus and merge her. And again, at max investment, at that kind of investment, you can definitely run plus speed IV on her and try to salvage her speed to run null follow up and be a bit faster so that she can prevent doubles from many of the threats. Yu is the final unit on this banner as a red infantry mage. He has got Cell Spell Tome, which is his preferred weapon, giving him plus 3 speed and it can give him bonus to his attack, speed, resistance and defense depending on the dragon flowers that he has got. So if you have given him 2 dragon flowers then he can get plus 4 to all of his stats, if you have given him 3 then he gets plus 5 and if you give him all 5 dragon flowers then he can get 7 to all of his stats so that can make him a pretty big stat ball. And speaking of being a stat ball, if you give him 3 or more dragon flowers then he can also get bonus doubler in his weapon. So he can just stack up even more stats by using the Rouse attack speed productively. So it does take you dragon flowers but if you like having a stat ball type of mage then Hugh can definitely be helpful. Unfortunately he doesn't really get any kind of unique effect in his weapon like null follow up or anything else which can help him in combat other than just stacking up stats. Because stats are not everything in Fae, stats fade after a certain time but the unique effects and the unique niches that units get from their weapon is going to be staying relevant for you know many times to come. So he doesn't really stand out too too much but still he can be a pretty nice and effective unit by stacking up a lot of stats and if you use him in the right matchups where he can just win the matchup based on the higher stats so he can function as a bulky red infantry mage in that regard. He also has speed defense ideal as a new skill. This is not the greatest ideal skill. He definitely has better options but still it's nice on a budget. And Rouse Attack Speed 4 definitely has really good synergy with the bonus doubler built into his weapon and also providing him with the Null Panic effect which can definitely help the bonus doubler effect of his weapon. For his stat spread he does have pretty respectable offensive stat spread of 38 base attack and 42 base speed and also has decent bulk overall especially after stacking up all of the stats from his weapon he can definitely get bulky especially at higher investments. So if you want to use him on a budget then you can simply run defense rest link so that he can fully buff himself up with the rouse attack speed 4 and the link skill and this can help you with the bonus doubler effect. He could also be used as a another unit in summoner duels s. So if people underestimate him then you can definitely checkmate them purely based on the stats because like I said you can get really really bulky in certain matchups where he just wins based on his stats. Um, so you can just run Legendary Eliwood to have triple bonus doubler and that is going to be extremely helpful especially with the null panic that you have. So lull skills are still going to be annoying for you to face but at the end of the day this can be a really fun setup with Legendary Eliwood if people underestimate him as a unit. So bonus doubler is a really nice slotty skill for doubling down on his weapons effect and for productively using the visible buffs even more. You can also use him with attack speed unity and null follow up from Brave Marianne. Attack speed unity can help you against the visible debuffs for giving him even more stats and I feel like null follow up is pretty much his best lobby skill uh, with this kind of weapon and this kind of playstyle. He can also be run in Aetherite's offense again by just stacking up enough stats and if the teams that do not have answer to him and his stats then he can easily tank them with a triple bonus doubler build by using Legendary Eliwood. So Eliwood is pretty much his best friend uh, when it comes to stat stacking and even at plus one merge he can definitely get a lot of stats here and Ashera could be helpful in the Astro Season providing him the visible buffs and also the null panic effect. At max investment he can definitely be used with close reversal or close foil. He will have that kind of bulk to take on even the melee enemies so it could be done at absolute max investment and if you do run him in arena with Ardul Infantry 4 then he can simply run null follow up and a menace skill. Like I said null follow up is pretty much the best option here to productively use the speed stat and also he has got enough bulk with stat stacking to survive a lot of the counter attacks. 
If you're gonna be sparking on this banner, then Ascended Yudun is pretty much the best option over here. And then I guess people can spark for fodder on Nime or even Hugh, but overall sparking for the fodder is not the best option, especially when you can get a powerful unit like Ascended Yudun, who also has really good fodder, and even at plus one merge, she's gonna be functioning as an amazing top tier save armor unit. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this banner review, if you did then make sure to share this video with your friends who are pulling on this banner or building up any of these units. And if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a like and a comment, helps me tremendously and if you really really enjoyed you could always support me directly by using super thanks or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more Faye analysis videos make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as bonus doubler of you against the dull all effect. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.